Hi folks, with this episode I am going to start talking about cooperative game theory and I think the best approach is to start with some examples. Um, so my favorite example is the ice cream example. There are three kids, I call them Adam, Bilal and Chang uh, or ABC. Um, Adam has six dollars, Bilal has four dollars and Chang has three dollars. All right. Um, well, they don't care about the money they have, but they would like to consume as much ice cream as they, they can. So they would like to buy ice cream with that money. Otherwise, money is, is, is irrelevant for them. Well, there are three ice cream tubs, all right? Only three. And one of them is sort of a small size, 500 gram, which is like uh, 1.5, uh, 1.1 uh, pound. And its cost is $7. The other one, the medium size, is 750 gram. I'm going to use the grams, um, which is almost like 1.6 uh, pound. And its cost is $9. And the biggest size, the large size, let's call it, is 1,000 gram. It's almost like 2.2 pounds. And its cost is $11. All right. As I said, the money is irrelevant for these kids. They just want to consume as much ice cream as they can. And so, well, obviously, as you look, nobody can afford to buy any ice cream because uh, nobody has more than seven as six dollars. Uh, however, they can pool their resources and buy some ice cream and share among themselves. So the question is, well, the, the, the kids are free to buy any one of these three tubs and they are free to uh, divide the ice cream between themselves as they wish. And the question is, what is the optimal way of doing it? Okay, well, the second example is voting. There are four political parties. Uh, let's suppose uh, the, there's a, this is a parliamentary regime and there are more than two political parties. Uh, in the parliament, A, B, C, D, and these are the number of seats for uh, those parties. A Party A has the majority, well, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest number of seats, 45, B has 25, and the other two parties have only 15 seats each. Well, they are uh, sort of about to vote for a new spending bill, uh, which is total of hundred mil, uh, million dollars and how it should be controlled by each party. I mean, should this whole amount, hundred million dollar managed by only one party should be divided between, you know, several parties. So that's also what they should decide. Well, in order to uh, pass this uh, spending bill and how to uh, sort of control this uh, uh, hundred million dollar, a majority vote or 51 vote is needed. So as you see, no single party can get the majority, but they have to um, sort of form some coalition and then uh, uh, then they may achieve the majority vote. So the question is, once again, what is the optimal solution? Meaning which parties are going to uh, sort of uh, form a coalition and how they're going to split the hundred million dollar between the parties, the, the management of hundred million dollar. Okay, and then the third example I have, I call it public good. There are three municipalities um, and they would like to, they need a water treatment uh, facility uh, uh, for, for their municipality. Obviously, they can build these facilities uh, by their own resources, uh, which will going to help only their own municipalities. For example, if municipality E uh, builds, uh, builds it for its own municipality alone, it's going to cost them uh, $20 million. Uh, for municipality W, it's going to cost them $30 million. And S, uh, the municipality S, is going to cost them uh, $50 million. So probably municipality S is bigger than the other two. However, they can uh, sort of pool their resources. So instead of building two different uh, water treatment facility, uh, municipality E and W can uh, get together and build one facility that is going to serve to both of those municipalities. And if they do it, well, the total cost 
to them is going to be $40 million, so which is definitely better, right? I mean, because if we do it individually, uh, the total cost is $50 million, but if we do it jointly, the cost is going to be $40 million. And similarly, if WNS gets together and builds one facility that is going to serve to both of WNS, uh, well, then its cost is going to be $80 million. And again, E and S, if they get together, the cost is going to be $60 million. And if all three gets together uh, and build a facility that is going to serve all three of them, uh, the cost is going to be $80 million. Well, once again, the question is, are they going to build the facility separately, jointly, and how they are going to split the cost? So, the first question uh, we should be asking, are these examples really talking about some sort of strategic environment? I mean, are they really game? Um, well, yes, I'm going to focus only on one example, the ice cream example. Well, this is a strategic environment, right? Uh, there are three players, Adam, Bilal, and Cheng, and they, they have some money, but the thing is no one individual can actually afford to buy an ice cream, and so they get together. Well, the question is, how are they going to form these coalitions? Um, I mean, and, and how are they going to sort of split the ice cream once they form a coalition? So these are all decisions. And the important thing is that uh, one player's action, whatever it is, I mean, we, 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 I mean I, I'm not specifying any action here, um, but one player's well-being is, does not only depend on his actions, it also depends on what the other guys are going to do, right? I mean, if Adam wants ice cream, he needs to convince at least one of the other guys uh, to join him and, and sort of pool their resources together and then buy ice cream. And then he should convince him sort of the way of division is like 50-50 or Adam is going to get the biggest portion. So whatever it is, whatever they decide, it's not just one person decision. Well, Obviously, you may think maybe Adam is a sort of a dictator, so he's going to basically grab all the other two guys' money, and then he's going to enjoy, say, uh, one kilo or 1,000 gram of ice cream by himself alone. Well, we assume that nobody has some sort of dictatorship or sort of a power to seize the entire control. So, so if they form some sort of a partnership, it's all voluntary. And obviously the incentives matter, right? I mean, nobody, um, nobody forms, uh, for example, Bilal is not going to form a coalition with Adam if Adam says, I'm not gonna give you anything. So maybe Bilal has more incentive to go to Chang and, and sort of discuss uh, you know, how to split if they two join together and buy, for example, 500 gram of ice cream.